Sunny, thank you very much for this very kind introduction. Uh, <laughs> FinFets attract a lot of attention because we know they are coming, but uh, they are new type of devices. So <clears throat> what I would try to do in this work is two things. Give kind of very basic introduction to FinFets to help you to relate them to the old-fashioned bulk transistors which we used to design with forever and then talk about some of the more complex issue associated with uh, FinFET technology including also some aspect of variability which could be a process induced variability, statistical variability and uh, uh, time dependent variability and then also some benchmark between bulk devices which will be introduced first uh, by the technology providers and some uh, SOI based devices so you can see uh, what is the difference and what is the potential. Uh, a lot of things for a single talk. I will go very fast but uh, if you have questions later on you can ask me and I'm hoping that this presentation will be available on the web together with voice recording so people can go back and uh, look some of the slides uh, later on. So I'll give you some background mainly to motivate the introduction of FinFETs. I will go through the basic of FinFETs, how they work, why they are potentially better than bulk. Uh, give you some known information, but from my perspective about already introduced FinFETs for which we have a lot of data and we can understand at least some of the technological difficulties associated with this uh, 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 small case study which we did compare performance uh, of bulk and SOI FinFETs and uh, talk a little bit about impact on SRAM and there will be no conclusions. Anybody can draw his own conclusions off. But it was mentioned already in the morning. The book scaling is dead for 10 years now. There is no more lithography scaling and improvement in device performance, circuit performance, transistor count just by simply shrinking technology. In order to make bulk transistors work and deliver with scaling, we had to do a lot of innovations. Actually, these guys in the foundries and IDM had to do a lot of innovation. First, they had to introduce strain, and this carried the bulk technology through two generations, uh, 90 and 65, and then uh, they have to replace the gate dielectric with high K gauge stack and very difficult pro, uh, uh, problem but uh, uh, this allow another two generations to carry through and then uh, 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 there was a kind of brick wall. Coming from two point of view, first is performance. Too many dopants, too high electric field, too low mobility too difficult to scale strain to deliver further performance, too difficult to scale gate oxal to deliver more carriers, uh, bulk was coming to the end. And solution to go further is to move from uh, bulk to a new device architecture. And the most widely accepted solution, of course, are FinFETs, uh, mainly because Intel introduced them first, for many reasons, not only performance, but uh, also economical reasons. And everybody follow Intel. And of course, there are other solutions which may be equally attractive, at least in middle uh, range, like SY. But I will talk about FinFETs because this is the accepted solution. So FinFETs were introduced to remedy two problems in both technology, performance and variability. Variability is important because with scaling of bulk, random dopants introduce unacceptable from design point of view variability, particularly for SRAM design. And uh, 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 this almost completely eats any design margins at 20 nanometer. And of course, 
Intel realized this uh, uh, a little bit earlier than the rest of the folks. And they were fast in introducing FinFEDs, but everybody is now moving to the same solution. What is variability? I'm talking about statistical variability. And this is atomic structure, atomic scale fluctuation in small devices. Main sources in bulk are random dopants, but there are other sources like metal gate or polysilicon granularity, wine edge roughness. The level of variability in 20 nanometer very high. It creates problem for SRAM particularly. It's very difficult at 20 nanometer to scale the SRAM in the same way you scale transistors. It is predicted that the gain in scaling at SRAM after many, many generations of 50% scaling will go down maybe to 40%. And this is mainly because of statistical variability. Everything which I will show you is based on tools developed by Glasgow University and marketed now by GSS. Uh, I will uh, show you some TCAT data, but also some compact model and statistical variability data related to FinFETs. Uh, basics. We need to understand FinFETs. And uh, they are kind of uh, simple concept. You have transistor, but instead of uh, uh, a planar transistor, you have a vertical transistor. So the channel is vertical. And uh, uh, the source and drain is here. The gate surrounds the channel. And this creates a lot of conceptual problems, particularly for designers. They are very uh, simple in their mind. They actually don't care too much about transistors. They know that transistors have channel length and channel width. Now they have to think about FinFETs and what is channel length, what is channel width, uh, how we count actually uh, 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 dimensions of these devices, how we put them in circuits. I try to give a very simple explanation. And this is a bulk transistor uh, with a particular width. And I will fold this device in a FinFET. So what I will do first, uh, I will uh, uh, cut the rest of the substrate. So this will be a very thin uh, channel transistor, but still with the same width. And then from the top, I will cut two times. One will be the middle of this channel, which will be the top of the fin. And then there are two sides, which are the sides of the fin. And then I will fold this down. And this is what happened. Now I have the same transistor, the same width, but part of this width are the sides of the fin, and part of this width is the top of the fin. So uh, simply speaking, the channel width of this device is double, uh, two times the height plus the fin width. And uh, this is what you have to remember all the time when you do design with FinFETs. There are also two flavors of FinFETs. You can make FinFETs on bulk. And this is the technology adopted by Intel. And this is the technology which will be adopted by the major providers at 14 nanometer. And this means that uh, you have this fin but you have to etch deeper. So you first define the fin and then you continue etching because you need to provide isolation. And this isolation is uh, uh, like STI insulation in bulk, but uh, 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 there are some technological difficulties because, for example, you cannot use planarization to make isolation uh, at the same level, so there may be some places when you feel this insulation more, some places where you feel less. Uh, there is an alternative to make uh, the fin fats directly on SOI substrate. In this case, you simply need to etch only the fin. 
So you can maybe control better the dimensions of the transistors. You then don't have this problem with uh, the isolation, but you may have some uh, uh, self-heating effect. You have to very carefully balance everything. But in terms of fabrication, this is uh, a little bit easier and cheaper, but the substrate is more expensive. Uh, this is how FinFET work, and this is where things become more complicated. Bulk transistors are simple to understand. You have the same kind of channel everywhere, and uh, most of the people are quite, quite comfortable with the operation of bulk transistors. FinFETs are more complicated. First of all, in most of the cases, they are fully depleted transistors. So uh, 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 the carriers flow in sub-threshold and threshold voltage a different place compared to where they flow at high gate bias condition. Uh, this is uh, charge distribution in the fin fat at different bias condition at zero and close to threshold voltage. The charge actually is in the middle of the channel. And then when you increase the gate bias, the charge starts to move to the interface, and also you may have uh, fringing effects, so the charge distribution in the channel is not uniform. There may be a little bit more charge near the corners, of course. This is idealistic device, you don't want to have uh, such sharp corners because there is a strong field, reliability effects, breakdown, but overall, this is what happens. If you look how the current flow, it is in 3D and it is more complicated. And this is, this is where the current flows at threshold voltage. It is not at the surface of the channel. Uh, most of the current is in the middle. Then at high gate voltage, most of the cur current flows through the uh, uh, corners. So it's very non-uniform channel. Much more difficult also to describe in terms of simple equations. And that's why uh, FinFET compact models, tomorrow you will hear beautiful talk from Chi Min Hu. FinFET compact models are more complicated than simple bulk compact models. And uh, uh, very difficult to have physical compact model which can describe accurately the full uh, range of operation of uh, uh, FinFET devices. Why they are better? Couple of reasons, but the most simple one is that they have better subthreshold swap. In bulk transistors, the subthreshold swap is determined by the gate oxide capacitance and the depletion layer capacitance. In presence of high doping, depletion layer capacitance is high and this degrades the subthreshold swap by a factor which is one plus this ratio between depletion layer capacitance and the gate oxide capacitance. In FinFETs, I don't have bulk capacitance. The fin is depleted. And as a result of this, my subthreshold swap is very close to the ideal subthreshold swap. In bulk devices, usually 100 millivolt per decade. In fin fats, maybe 60. And what is the advantage of this? You can play this in two ways. You can uh, uh, try to avoid the threshold voltage to have the same leakage. And as a result, you will have more gate overdraft and more gate current. You can simultaneously match the performance in terms of on current, and then you can have much less leakage. Big advantage. Depends on what you want to design with FinFETs. You may have advantage in terms of leakage, standby power, or you may have advantage in terms of performance. And this is if you assume that there is no additional factors which increase the performance of the FinFETs, but there may be additional factors, mobility may be better in FinFETs, and also the ratio between pitch and uh, uh, fin perimeter may be favorable to give you more current in the fin. And then you have additional advantage. You have uh, more performance, 
and you have also lower leakage. So there is a lot of potential in FinFETs. Uh, uh, of course, this ratio between fin perimeter and pitch is very important. If the fin perimeter is larger than the pitch, you have more current per unit width. And if not, actually you are losing some of the performance. <coughs> so this, this is important factor. And of course, these devices are more complex in terms of geometry and layout. So you have to consider better how to lay out your devices. And of course, there is uh, overhead in terms of transferring FinFET uh, uh, technology into old book design in terms of standard cell libraries, in terms of SRAM. There are complications. You don't have the capability to fine tune with the channel width. You have uh, multiples of the uh, uh, fin uh, uh, transistors and that, that's important and may can, uh, create some difficulties. Additional uh, implications and people not always think about this, but vertical fin geometry also introduces additional capacitances, particularly parasitic capacitances between the fin. Uh, in some cases, you have overgrown soil strain region in order to introduce strain, and then you have the plugs, and they can face part of the fin, and uh, the capacitances in general are more complex, and in some cases, uh, 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 higher. And then uh, technology providers has to play game and introduce spacers with uh, lower K than in the past uh, 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 with bulk technology. So. Uh, uh, FinFET geometry also introduced specific requirements in terms of uh, uh, fabrication. The fabrication is, of course, more complex. This is an example from uh, uh, a company called Coventer, which has very nice uh, uh, process simulation tools looking on wild scale, uh, 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 different type of fabrication steps which result in the fin uh, 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 development, fin fed development. And uh, of course, there are more opportunities for variation because you have additional steps like the vertical etching, uh, which can change the shape of the fin, but you have also this overgrowth uh, of the uh, uh, epitaxial soils and drain region, which inserts strain, but there may be variation in shape and form of this epitaxial layer. And this is variation in strain and variation in contact resistance. And then, of course, when you do all this process simulation, you would like actually to take these results and do device simulation, but in realistic geometry. So we work together with Coventer to try to understand the impact of different process issue on the performance of uh, FinFETs. So, Intel. They were first of course, uh, uh, the introduction what, uh, was met with great interest and, of course, with somewhat surprise because I personally didn't expect that uh, FinFETs will come so, so soon. But once they fabricated the chip, people can take the chip, slice them and dice them, measure them, look what is in the technology. And uh, 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 this generates a lot of insight. So uh, uh, what we did very early on, uh, we uh, took some published cross-sections of uh, the Intel FinFETs and uh, by no means actually these are uh, the type of transistors which they were drawing on their presentation. They are not nice vertical parallel walls devices. They have very complex geometry like uh, triangular or trapezoidal chain and the Geometry is changing as a result of the introduction of shallow trench insulation. And uh, uh, of course, there are a lot of images from chip works about these devices. So you can uh, 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 reconstruct the device geometry. And there are published data about performance. So you can reconstruct also doping profile to get the device performance. And you can understand how all this works. Uh, 
I mean, movies are nice, but this is really what happened. Uh, uh, wall drain voltage, as you expect, the channel is kind in the middle of the fin, but uh, uh, this confinement is uh, moderated by the triangular shape. And believe me, having a compact model for a device with this shape is very complicated because uh, uh, quantum confinement effects play important role, the shape play role, and the channel is moving all the time. Uh, uh, with the increase of gate voltage, the channel goes to the tip, so most of the current actually flows through the top of the fin fat. Uh, what is the implication? Now, we don't know exactly why uh, uh, Intel adopt this triangular geometry? There are hints that uh, maybe reliability issues, uh, maybe the way you deposit uh, high K material affects this uh, shape. But uh, uh, in terms of performance, this is not the optimal shape for the fin fat. The optimal fa shape of the fin fat actually is the vertical. And you can see this very easily. If you simulate two devices which are kind of identical, uh, have the same effective width, but one is with vertical and one is with triangular shape. Actually, the triangular shape has more uh, uh, short channel effects. The second thing, uh, if you look again some pictures from uh, uh, Chipworks, you will see that most probably it's not very easy to fabricate these devices in a kind of uniform fashion. Uh, three transistors uh, next to each other, and you can look that the shape of each one is kind of different. Maybe some of those are near the edge of the shallow trench insulation, this is in the middle, but uh, you make transistors hoping that they are the same and they are not, and of course, the, the variation in the shape uh, uh, introduce variation in their performance, threshold voltage on current. So, uh, uh, another thing which we did, we uh, introduce uh, these realistic shapes in our simulator and we look the impact of this process induce variation and what you can see is that for three transistors which are next to each other you have uh, roughly 5% differences in performance and the other important thing is that compared to rectangular transistors actually these transistors have uh, uh, 10 to 12% less performance. So by making the fin of this particular shape, you are losing some of the performance, you are sacrificing uh, short channel effects, but I'm absolutely sure that there are serious technological uh, 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 necessity for this, uh, which I don't understand, like modular uh, uh, 100%. So another interesting question is why you don't make simpler fin fats on SY? Because bulk is complicated. You need to edge the fin, you need to edge uh, then a trench, you need to fill this trench, there may be more variation. The etching of the trench may affect the optimal shape of the fin. And we try to quantify actually what is the sacrifice in terms of performance and also in terms of process control when you decide to do bulk instead of uh, uh, FDSY. And it uh, uh, seems that uh, SOI fin fats are better, but most probably there are good economical reasons to go for bulk, uh, reducing the cost of silicon wafer and maybe increasing the profit uh, uh, for the foundries from the fabrication. So we did a case study, uh, two almost identical in terms of geometry bulk and uh, SY transistors. Uh, this will be shortly published actually in transaction, but there are other papers which describe this uh, uh, experiment. And we were looking uh, to compare performance in terms of drive uh, current and leakage. 
And the design was done very carefully in order to have uh, best overall performance for the bulk and the S, uh, FDSY transistors. And this is tuning of spacer, source drain, uh, implantation, and other conditions. And then you can compare them. And this, this is actually comparison of drive current for the two transistors at the same gate over drive and leakage current. And what we found is that the same gate overdrive, uh, FDSY transistors have higher performance and uh, in general they have uh, uh, lower leakage. Uh, some understanding, and this of course is uh, related to how you design the devices, comes from the fact that in bulk you need to introduce uh, uh, some stopper below the channel to suppress short channel effects. Yes. Uh, uh, we have uh, millions of data. This, this data is available, but uh, uh, the part of the comparison is here. This is ion at the same IOF. So uh, uh, ion in the FDSY is approximately 5% higher compared to bulk at the same uh, IOF. This is IOF at the same ion. IOF in FDSY is approximately three times slower compared to bulk and the same uh, on current. Uh, and uh, in terms of variability, the two devices are very serious. So there is no penalty in terms of statistical variability. So this is an interesting study. It will be published actually maybe next month so you can read more comprehensively. But if you want data, I have a lot of data which I can give you. Uh, uh, the other interesting thing which we did together with uh, IBM is to look the impact of FinFETs on SRAM design. And this is actually everything which Saubrach said in his talk. You have to be very careful. You have to look everything. You don't look just the nominal FinFET design. You have to look the impact of process variability and have good understanding how well you can control different uh, aspects of the device geometry, oxide thicknesses, in order to understand where are your process corners. And then on top of this, you need to have statistical variability. And what is important, particularly in FinFETs, is that there is very strong correlation between statistical and process variability. The statistical variability of nominal device is very different from the variability of the coronal devices because you are shrinking FinFET geometry. And the response, unfortunately, is not like in bulk. It does not follow the palagram rules. It does not scale properly with uh, 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 the overall uh, uh, perimeter with the width uh, of the FinFET. So uh, uh, this, is, this is a little bit different story. We design devices for 60 nanometer technology, but in mind to publish all the results. So the device design is uh, not the real IBM technology. It's kind of Gedanken design, but it's close to some of the important features. So uh, uh, it's kind of double gate instead of three gate device because we have some hard mark or mask on the top. Uh, geometry very similar. Uh, and uh, uh, then the first thing which we want to explore is how the process control affects the performance of this device. So uh, 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 based on technology, IBM gives us specifications for the variations in uh, different device uh, dimensions. And we did the design of experiment to cover the whole process variation step. And then uh, we can map really performance, everything, uh, on current, off current, leakage, whatever, uh, based on uh, this design of experiment so we can see performance. I'm sorry, but this is uh, 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 length of the fin, this is width of the fin, this is height of the fin. So you can see how the process variation affect the response of the fin. 
And uh, by the way, there is very nice uh, sweet point uh, uh, fin design, which is almost in the middle of this specification. But we can now take uh, uh, this variation, uh, capture them in compact models. This, this is what people want for designs. And have compact models which can respond accurately to this process variation. And then you can explore in design what is the impact of process variation on a circuit. For example, you have SRAM. You have different flavors of SRAM design. Uh, uh, this one is one, one, one uh, uh, fin, but you can have different flavors, one, two, one, one, two, two, or whatever. And based on these compact models which capture the process variability, and this is not a simple task because the compact model is not good enough to capture this. You have to renormalize some of the parameters to make them uh, uh, geometry dependent, and then the response surface from the compact model can uh, uh, replicate the response surface from the TCAT simulation. And this model gives you very good response in terms of process variability. And then you can see what variation in fin width, fin length, fin height can do to your SRAM design. Statics noise margin, uh, right noise margin, of course, more complicated things like grid current, blah, 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 but I don't have time to show you all this. Uh, uh, you can also think about optimization of the fins. This is now, I have device, I would like to optimize this device for uh, uh, my SRAM application. What I can do? I have different scenarios. I can maybe able to adjust the threshold voltage of all three transistors or maybe have one threshold voltage for the P channel, one threshold voltage for the N channel or something else. And based on this simulation, you can actually explore the possible optimization of, in terms of balance between uh, uh, static noise margin and right margin of this transistor. And of course, if you have all the freedom to change threshold voltage of all these transistors, you have a lot of uh, possibility for optimization. Uh, uh, in other cases, your optimization is a little bit more restrained. But those are the kind of things which you can do with this type of models. And this can be done for future technology because using Monte Carlo simulation, you can predict actually performance, capture in uh, compact models, and study uh, the behavior in the future. Uh, you can do more complicated analysis for different uh, flavors of SRAM design. Of course, moving from uh, 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 one, one, one fin fets to one, two, one, you get improvement in static noise margin, but you sacrifice a little bit of right noise margin. Uh, actually, two, three, three is not very good in terms of static noise margin. Uh, all these games are possible once you have good compact models which respond to uh, uh, process variability. And then, on top of this, you want to put statistical variability. So you now have a design of experiment where you run statistical variability in the whole space of process variation. And then you fit statistical compact model, uh, which can follow the change in statistical variability with the process parameter variability. And this is, believe me, very complex task but uh, we kind of succeed doing this. Uh, now you have a model which can show you the interplay between process and statistical variability. You can look what will happen if my fin is uh, getting uh, fatter. And this is not only in terms of the overall device performance, but in terms of statistical variability. And you can study the impact of this on SRAM design. And what we are very proud of is a very accurate compact model strategy, which can allow you to track statistical variability across the whole process variation space. And what, as I said, actually, there is very strong interaction between process and statistical variability. So uh, 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 AV factors are changing across the whole process space. 
And then you can look the impact of this statistical variability. So you have superimposed process variability, statistical variability, and you can look the impact on different uh, uh, SRAM, FinFET based design styles. And I don't really have time to explain all this, but uh, a lot of this uh, uh, is already published or will be published. So we have full instrument. I mean, your dream uh, is uh, more or less true. We have capability uh, to predict the performance of the devices, to predict the process induced variability for future technology, and to link statistical variability to this process variability. And the final draw of this is that on top of all this, you have degradation. And with the degradation, statistical variability is changing. So you need to have model which can capture uh, uh, virgin variability as fabricated and then it can trace the increase in statistical variability in the shift in averages in the process of degradation. And this can be done through simulation. So uh, TCAT simulation becomes extremely important in terms of predicting future technology and comparison the impact, impact of different technology on design because this is the only way to get reliable data. Compact models are not accurate enough. They don't have features allow you to simulate statistical variability and reliability. TCAT becomes crucial in estimate, uh, estimating impact of future devices on technology. And degradation, of course, has huge impact on SRAM cell based on FinFET design. Uh, that's the end of my talk. There are two different facets, and I don't want to draw overall conclusions, but uh, you most probably have your conclusions already. <laughs>